Hello and welcome. Last time we talked a lot about how to identify queen ant. Now I want to cover the topic of what to do to give a queen ant the optimal conditions to establish a colony. If you have managed to catch a queen, you can keep her in a test tube for a few hours. To prevent a possible escape of the queen, you seal the test tube with a piece of cotton. In other YouTube videos, forums or other websites you have probably seen the possibilities to ensure optimal basic conditions for establishing a colony. We create the queen's own habitat in a test tube setup. What we need is relatively easy. First we need a queen ant, which we have already caught. Second we need a test tube. The size to be chosen depends on the ant species. It should be a size in which the queen can live. We also need some cotton and water. Some time ago I ordered some test tubes, about 30 pieces, via Amazon. I bought some cotton at a nearby store in my hometown. So maybe you wonder why the ants should live in a such a small habitat. The reason is simple as the structure of the test tube setup. In this test tube we prevail optimal breeding conditions to start with the establishment of a colony. There is a constant temperature and humidity that the queen needs to establish her colony. Making a test tube setup is relatively easy. As a first step the test tube is filled with three quarters of water. Once this step is done, take a piece of cotton big enough to seal the test tube. With a narrow object you push the cotton quickly to the water. If you have done it well, no air bubbles will arise, as unfortunately can be seen in my example. However, if an air bubble has arisen, that's not so bad because the function is not affected. Make sure the cotton is wet and not soaked. The water isn't allowed to flow through the cotton. In the worst case, your ants will drown in it. If some water has leaked through, you can absorb this with cotton swabs. Now you have to bring your queen ant into the test tube as gently as possible. She must not be injured or stressed. When this step is done, you seal the opening of the test tube with another piece of cotton. Push this cotton until the queen lives in a small chamber. It may seem that this attitude is very cruel, but it is not. In nature, the queen burrow in the soil in a small chamber where they start laying eggs. The queens need little space or freedom of movement during that time. All in all, that's everything you need to know about this setup. It also may be that the queen bites very aggressively into the cotton in the first few days. That's because she has to get used to her new home. Most ants do not need food until the first generation of workers hatch. But there are also queens which have to be fed during the foundation phase. For this you need to do some research on your caught queen ant to know if she needs to be fed or not. In the first generation of workers hatched, I started to feed them once a week with a small drop of honey. The reason you do not have to feed your queen until the first workers hatch is that she feeds herself with her fat reserves during this time from her wing muscles. These fat reserves are no longer in need because she has torn the wings after mating. With these fat reserves she can get along without food for a very long time. Therefore there is no need to feed your queens. However, as soon as the first workers have hatched, you can start to feed them once a week. A small drop of honey is enough. Now comes the hardest part. You have to forget your queens for a few weeks or even months to give them the peace of mind they need to establish their colonies undisturbed. Once a week you can dare to take a look at them to see if they are okay. Do not be disappointed if a queen dies. Unfortunately this can happen from time to time. There is also another possibility than the test tube setup to create an optimal habitat for the queen. I bought some white tongue nests on the internet, which you can see here. The worksmanship is very well done and offers everything a young ant colony needs to survive. I bought two smaller and one medium sized nest. At each nest there is a small opening where you can connect a hose to create paths to other areas. 
At the middle sized nest there are even two openings. At the very small openings it is possible by means of a syringe to apply water into the nest to provide the nest with the necessary moisture which the ants need. The water can easily be raised with a syringe and a needle. By the way, please do not use a pointed needle. Water is injected evenly into both openings. So if you liked my video, I would be very happy about comments, likes and a subscription. I would be also very glad about some feedback. Many thanks for tuning on and I see you in my next video. Thanks.